so I'm I'm going to run through the extending of the uh, or the shortening of the um, nested rectangles but I'm going to do that at the end obviously I'm using these two again I'm using a different stencil I'm using this one in the background because obviously it's for um, an anniversary card so I wanted it to be a bit sort of um, lovey dovey if you like but I, I just love this set of stencils is one of my favourite sets that Lisa's bought out. But this one in particular, I just I just love it. So I'm using that one. And I'm using the um, circles, but not actually on the card. I've used it to cut out a circle that I'm going to use as a mask, if you like. Now, I've got my piece of card. Um, I haven't really measured this. My card base is a 7x7, seven seven, for those that always ask me. This is about just over five and a half. Yeah, just, just about five and a half square, to be honest. Um, and I've taped it down, and I've already made sure that it sits within that stencil. So you can see that I've actually lined it up, and it sits within that stencil. I haven't lined it up very well, actually, because it's a little bit... That's better. And I've taped it down because I don't want it to move. I'm going to start like I did with the blue one with my white ink pad and my white brush. And I'm going to put a, a base of white, white down on here. Now, you may be able to see some pink on this stencil. Don't worry about it. They are clean because I washed them. Um, and I think what's happened is this rhubarb jam, because it is a really, really deep colour, it may have stained the mylar a little bit, but it isn't isn't going to affect your inking. There's no pink inside here. It, it's just on the mylar, so don't worry about it. So I've done my white, and then I'm going to come in with my rhubarb jam. Um, and again, I'm going to come in quite lightly, because, like I said to you on Monday... You can add colour, but once you've put it down on your on your project, you can't take it away. So you can see I'm actually coming in on this one side quite a bit heavier than I am on the other side. Just because I like that effect. Okay, I'm probably spending a little bit more time on here than, than I did on the blue one, but... Right, so I've put my white in the background there, and I'm also, which I didn't do the other day, I'm going to put a bit of white in the background on these flowers too. Because these are the, the basis of the little flowers, and I want those to be a little bit pale, so that when I put the next layer on top, it's it stands out a lot more. Right, so I'm coming in again with my rhubarb jam, and I'm going quite lightly up here, because this is the actual glass that you can see through this bit down here is the liquid like i said to you the other day so you want the top bit to be lighter than the bottom bit and i'm going to come in with my stencil brush on here but not not too heavy she said but hopefully that white will absorb some of that color and i can go doubly heavy on my next layer i'm just going to come a little bit heavier down this one side just to shade that glass yeah the detail on these stencils is just fabulous so again I'm going to put a little bit of white down here on my stem and I want my stem to be sort of lighter than the liquid part but darker than the glass part because it's actually um, still like solid glass but because it's solid glass and it's in a it's in a more condensed shape then it will be it will be slightly darker so i'm coming quite heavy on these parts because they're my labels and my sort of paper parts that are on the on the bottle so these can be quite heavy and these are going to stand out beautifully when you emboss them and i've cut this piece of card obviously it fits inside that stencil but it also fits inside my embossing folder. So, you know, it's going to be it's going to be spot on. That's what I wanted to make sure of that it fits inside my folder. 
Okay, so I'm coming in with my stencil brush and you'll notice I didn't add any more ink to the brush because although this is sort of darker than this bit, I don't want it to be overly dark. So I haven't gone too dark in that top bit, but I am going to just fill that, that bit at the top because that's the back part of the glass. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just adding my white to the stems because I want the stems to be really quite pale. And I'm not going to add any more ink to my brush until I see what my stems of these little flowers look like with what I've got left on my brush. I'll leave that, I don't think I'll add any more colour. Yeah, happy, happy, happy. So we're on to number five already. Now again, I'm going to come in with my white because I want the background of these flowers to be really, really soft. Okay, again, I'm not adding any ink to my brush until I've seen how much ink I've put in down with what's left on my brush because I want these to be quite pale hmm. yeah don't want any more ink on there not sure what that mark is must have been a mark on my card never mind okay I'm going to come quite deep in here because again this is the foil part of the bottle. I'm starting quite soft on these roses but I'm, I'm, I might probably go a little bit darker when I see what they look like. I think on my fingers now. And that's the beauty of being able to take the stencil off, have a look, decide whether you're happy with it. I might just go a little bit deeper actually on that background there. And leave the one at the front yeah and then the last two we're going to put the detail in on those flowers so again I'm going to come quite heavy with my rhubarb jam and my stencil brush okay so we're now down to the last one and that's just the fine detail on the glass and on the bottle and um, it's not until you emboss these that you really appreciate that last tiny little bit of detail like on those flowers and on the bottle and the glass it looks amazing okay so that's that bit done now then i'm going to put the lid on my white so that i don't mess everything up and end up with a, a pale pink white ink pad because I don't want that. Put my mask down and I'm not going to get any stenciling over my stenciling. Now I can put that down and not worry about it. So I'm going to pop that on there and then again I'm not re-inking my brush because whilst I want this um, in the background to be great I don't want it to be so in your face that it overtakes the main part of the card. So we're coming in with this little beautiful heart stencil. It's, I don't think it's a repeating pattern. So when you come to like matching it up, I wouldn't go right to the edge and then you, you've got a little bit of room to play with. Okay, so let's just take this tape off here. Right. So, so this little band down here, if you place that more or less where you finished your last lot of stenciling, you shouldn't get a line. So, again, coming in at the top here, I'm really quite light with my touch on this because I really don't want it to be too obvious. I want it there, I want you to be able to see it, but I don't want it to spoil what's already down there yeah i'm happy with that 
circle back and then put that back down there and just do that last little bit again not re-inking my brush because i re-inked last time so i don't need to and by using the mask you're not going over your stenciling okay so i've got my hearts in the background but obviously i want this circle to really be obvious so i'm going to add a little bit of ink to my brush and i'm going to take it off in the lid and then when i want any more ink i'm going to take it out of the lid and what i'm going to do is i'm just gently coming off that circle onto my card now you won't see this really until i've finished i can only just see it it's very subtle if i just take that off can you see the effect that you're going to get i just think it's it's just a lovely effect um to finish off your card it <laughs> now I have I have sort of slipped a little bit at the top there but never mind never mind never mind never mind but I think that looks really quite nice however once you emboss it it'll look even better but then I'm not going to leave it at just embossing it. I'm just going to add a little extra something in a second. Once I've just run this through the embossing machine. Take a few minutes just to line it up properly. It's worth spending a bit of time and making sure you do it properly. Okay, so that's my embossing. Okay. Fabulous. Fabulous. You could even use the deboss side. I think the deboss side is equally as fabulous. Okay, so because I wanted this to really, really stand out, what I did was I took the stencils. So this one, this one, and this one. And I drew through the stencils to make a bottle and a glass. And then I cut them out. And they're on the back of these okay and then i stenciled through those properly and did myself another bottle and another glass and stuck it on the top and then i put 3d pads on the back of here and then i'm going to put those onto the embossed part of my card so that bottle and the glass really do look as though they're standing in front of those flowers I mean, they look like they're standing in front of the flowers anyway. I'm not saying that. But it just makes them look just a little bit different. And if anybody wants to sort of look underneath or at the side, all they're going to see is the stenciling that you originally did underneath. So just... And, and I, I cut these out. I actually used this, the die that comes with the embossing folder and i cut the bottle out as far as it would and the same with the glass and then just followed that line round and finished it off so that you've got the same sort of one mil border all the way round and i just think it makes it look that little bit more upmarket if you like so then i'm going to pop that oops on there and although it will catch and i emboss them as well and although it will catch the embossing from the flowers i don't think you notice it once you've added it to your card but it just makes those pop really really nicely so i've already got my background seven by seven card and then i can pop this on here like that okay so we'll do that now okay so I'm just going to pop this down on here. It's only the, the smallest mat and layer because I didn't really want it to be too obvious, but I wanted it to, I just wanted it to lift the image. And I think a, a black mat and layer is just, just finishes it off, don't you think? So then I've got my sentiment to add on and my sentiment is from the box kit 
perfect happy anniversary um, and all I've done again like I did on Monday was just use the same ink and just colour one of the white sentiments with the same ink pad so that it just all ties in beautifully is it straight? I think so yeah so there you go so that's my card that was my one that I'd done in case the other one went wrong <laughs> ever prepared me i used to be a brownie guide um i said on monday that i wanted my um rectangle to be a specific size and the rectangle shapes that i've got in some of the other dies whilst they're probably the right size in depth they were too narrow in the width so i used the nested and stitched rectangles um and i've made it fit my project so because i want this smaller than this i want the width i don't want the depth okay so what i'm going to do if i show you my plates what you need to do is put your die onto your card and then put your card and your die so that it overhangs your plates okay can you see that so that die there and that card is hanging over the edge of that plate okay so what that means is you're not going to get a harsh line across here okay so if i show you if i just put this down and run it through my machine i'm running it all the way through okay so if i take this out of here now i've run that all the way through my machine okay now you can see that it's only cut up to here because it was overhanging this so it's not going to cut where there's no pressure so when you want to change the size of this now all i want to do is bring this up here okay and you can see that it's going to it's going to give me a smaller rectangle because what it's actually going to cut out is only this bit yeah so all i want to cut really is this bottom bit right so i would hang over most of this rectangle over the edge of my plate because what might happen is where you're double cutting because this has got stitching on it it might it might actually cut through the card okay so you need to be careful of that but i think it will work fine now I am going to tape the, the die down to the card, okay? You will find that if you fiddle around with it, it will slot into the stitched lines, all right? But put as much of your card over the edge as you can, because what you're actually only wanting to cut is this last little bit here, okay? You could do it half and half rather than what I'm doing to make it easier. And then put your other plate on the top. And then put that all through your die cutting machine put it through this end first and then you're not going to mess anything up so if i run that through keep my fingers crossed behind the back and then when i take this out you'll see that it's actually cut my rectangle the size i want it okay so i've still got that width but i haven't got that same depth yeah you can see there how much smaller it is than the actual die okay and that that will work for squares and um, it'll work for rectangles it's not going to work for everything but for th for this sort of shape particularly it's it's just a clever trick to remember okay so hang your card over the edge where you don't want it to cut and you won't get a cut line and you won't get a line where it's sort of sitting up to be with me um that there won't be any sort of creasing on here at all well, you, you can see there is no creasing but it is smaller than the actual rectangle which is what i wanted and that's what i used on monday and the same will work for the the scalloped rectangle as well 
all you need to do is just make sure that you move it up a complete scallop so if you want this to fit inside it do your scalloped one first measure your scalloped one and then you can measure this and then you work you work out how much sh smaller you want this to be i hope all that made sense yeah it, it's easy it, it's a bit fiddly and you might you might scrap a bit of card so practice on some cheap nasty card first until you get it right because once you've done it and you've got it right you won't forget it okay um but it's just a way of making sure that that if you want that width but you don't want that depth you can get round it the same goes for making it bigger right okay so you want to make it longer i'll use the right side and then i can use the card probably after so you want to make it longer oops you want to make it longer same same rule really um put your die on your card and hang it over the edge all right and i would hang it over the edge sort of roughly how much you want to make it bigger if that makes sense and um, so let's make it bigger all right so i'm gonna overhang it not by very much because i'm actually wanting a lot longer all right so let me use a bit of tape take that down there and run it through put it through plate end first not card end first and then just run it through the machine because you're not going to get a you're not going to get a cut line and you're not going to get um a crease line down here okay let me just take that off there the tape is a little bit sticky because it's a new piece okay now you want to make it longer now i've got to think about this now so let's say we want it that much longer okay so this is going to be a really long piece of card all right so let's put the tape this end now what you need to do is overhang it the other way all right so where you've got sort of stitched lines up to i'd go as near to the edge of the plates as you can so can you see my stitching is is here so my stitching is right near the end of that plate that way you're not going to get much cut through if it does happen to cut through the card all right so you've extended it this way you're not going to get a cut line over here because there's no pressure here to cut it okay so i'm just going to pop that plate over the top and again run it through plate end first not card end first and run it all the way through your machine because i know that was what some of you were worried about was that your machine doesn't go backwards and forwards you don't you don't have to worry about that all right let's just take this tape off here put it down there and you've got an extra long piece just have to make sure that you line it up properly so you've got now an extra long piece so not only can you make it a shorter piece, you can also extend it and make it a longer piece. OK, you just have to remember which end to hang over the end of your plates. And if you're looking for something that's not going to cut, it's where there's no pressure. So although your die may overhang your plate because there's no pressure on it, it's not going to cut. So you're not going to get any cut lines. And you're not going to get any creases does that all make sense i hope so i have to think about doing it that way i have to think about extending it so there is a way of getting more than one use out of one die so that one die gave you both of those um and the original shape as well if you wanted to so you're getting three for the price of one there aren't you so there's my card for today. Thank you for joining me. Um, I really appreciate it, as always. So have a fabulous weekend, everybody, and I'll see you soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.